Humanity, I love you all with all my heart, with all my might. My videos are about love, energy, creation, infinity, because this is exactly who we are. We're infinite love, we're infinite energy, we're infinite creation. This is a very, very special video. This is a very special video because this is, a, I've been telling you, if you've been following my, uh, my journey as a content creator, uh, putting out there the message of my book, Fantasies and Illusions, Compass, The Quest for Free Will, you would know that the book has 10 exercises, 10 exercises, sorry, I believe eight exercises, I think it's eight, could be somewhere between eight and 10, but uh, it's the exercises. And I have spoken about one exercise before in a previous video, I've done this already. But this is the video for the exercise itself. This is the, the, the exercise uh, video. And this is the first video. It's the first exercise. And it's exercise one. And you can always refer to it on the website so you can see the visual on Substack on YouTube. That's y.how slash one. That's y.how slash one. What I mean by one is number one, the actual number, the digit, okay? That's y.how slash one on YouTube, Substack, and the website. So let's, it's, it's a lot of information and I wanna make sure that uh, I, I get to it because uh, the format that I'm using right now allows me to record unimpededly for uh, without interruptions uh, for 40 minutes because it's the limit, it's four gigabytes. Uh, so, um, and that's what this full resolution of leads to 10 minutes per gigabyte. So it's 40 minutes, give or take. So I want to make sure that I do that. Otherwise the video, it would have to be parts and I have to put them together and it, it becomes a lot longer and it takes time to process and edit and all that. And I don't want to be doing any of that. So I'm going to try to keep the messages concise within 40 minutes. And in that way, it's just a lot easier for me to upload the content immediately. Okay, so let's talk about it. So we have 40 minutes. So exercise one, okay, is affirmations. It's, a, it's an exercise about affirmations. Very important. Affirmations are very important. They have helped me a lot as a human, and I know that if I can be helped with this, you can also be helped. It's a very useful, practical exercise. It's very simple, and everyone from home or anywhere where you are, you can do this exercise and put it into practice, and you would see the results immediately. Overnight, you will start to see results, the way you think, and the way you behave, and the way you go about things. So it's true self-affirmations, because as we know, the first primary element of compass is identity and true self. And the purpose of life is to find your true self first, so then you can get on your way. So once you, ident you find your true self, you know who you are, your identity and true self, then you can choose your purpose because you know exactly who you are. So you will be able to very accurately choose purposes that are actually in resonance with who you are in alignment with your heart energy. So you follow your heart. And this exercise is exactly about that. It's about following your heart. You follow your heart because it's our true self affirmations. And it's through the true self identity-based purpose that we find our purpose, we find our dreams, our callings, the opportunities, the goals, uh, purposeful goals. Uh, through purposeful daily action, as it, it is the case with Compass. So this is who we are. We're infinite eternal creators. We're Compass. We're Sandow. So let's let's get into it. So exercise one, true self-affirmations, essentially is unifying the 10 dimensions and 11 boundaries. What 10 dimensions, what 11 boundaries were? These are the 10 dimensions of true self. I have spoken about this at length, and I'm going to do that today again. 
And this is based on a previous video that I made and it's part of the book, is the uh, true self dimensions. And I have identified 10 dimensions that we all humans have, no matter who you are. And each, each of those 10 dimensions make up who we are. And at the heart of it, at the epicenter, the union, the zero point, the singularity, where all these 10 dimensions intersect, that's where your true self is. Okay, so there is 10 dimensions. And then the true self also has boundaries, 11 boundaries, starting with self-love and finishing with self-transcendence. And you, you unify the 10 dimensions and the 11 boundaries into this exercise by following your heart and you will get magnificent results, impressive results, amazing results, great, beautiful results, because you would find your true self. You would find yourself. You would find your identity. You would know exactly who you are. And this would lead you to your purpose. And then you can get on your way with your dreams and make your dreams come true by taking purposeful early action here and now, manifesting your free will and making your dreams come true because this is exactly who we are. We like spherical energy. We like spherical beings. We are a benevolent species. We're a purposeful species. We're here to love. And, and love is that. It's a purposeful life. It's creation. Loving our creations. Okay? So it starts with that, the unifying of the 10 dimensions, the unification of the 10 dimensions and the 11 boundaries. So I'm going to walk through the 11 boundaries and the 10 dimensions today. But let's focus on the beginning, which is our heart, the human heartbeat. The human heartbeat is the most important thing. The human heartbeat is what gives us life, the pulse of life, the pulse of creation. We are alive because of the human heartbeat. The human heartbeat generates the electromagnetic field that surrounds the human body, that powers the human body so we can be conscious and self-aware, we can think and, and be who we are, and be who we are. A benevolent species, a sentient species, capable of emotions and feelings. Energy comes from the heart because of the human heartbeat, and love is the highest energy that the human heart can create. We are alive because of the heart. It's the primordial instinct to live is the human heartbeat. And love and emotions come from the heart, so we live to love and we love to live. Okay, so it's our instinct to live, it's our instinct to love. We love our creations, we love our children, we make love, we make children. All these different notions, please refer to my previous videos. It's all about the heart, it's a human heart. We follow our heart because the signs and signals, the inner voice comes from our heart. It's telling us, it's emotions, it's feelings. Do this, don't do that. That feels good, keep doing it. Don't do that, that's not right. It's always our heart. It's always our heart because we're sentient beings, we're conscious and self-aware. We're intelligent. We're a benevolent species, it's our nature. We're a love-based a love -based species, we're a heart-based species, we're a heartful species, we're a good species. We create with the energy of our hearts because we are alive because of our hearts. The biological creator is a human heart. Without the heart, the human species wouldn't exist. Everything comes from the heart. Okay, so that's why you follow your heart because your true self, your identity, emerges as a result of the human heartbeat, the pulse of life, the pulse of creation. So you're alive. So you have an identity and a true self because of the human heartbeat. So you become a creator. Just like creation creates creators and creation created us. You become a creator. And that is your identity and true self. And you're here to find yourself. And once you find yourself, then you can find your purpose. You, you identify your purpose and you choose it with your, with your own choices. You, you're, you're, you're manifest your free will by taking purposeful daily action. And this exercise, true self-affirmations, is exactly that. It's helping you understand who you are, finding yourself so you can find your purpose. It's the beginning of it all. It's the foundation. That's why it's the first exercise. Because it allows you to ground yourself in gratitude, self-love. And from there, you build out through your boundaries and your dimensions and then you will be able to pinpoint by following your heart by listening to paying attention to the signs and the signals that your heart is giving you the emotions about each of your dimensions when you go through your boundaries to have a pretty good idea of who you are and why you're here so then you choose a purpose or multiple purposes because we have the ability to have many purposes, as many as we like, as many as we can manage. Because this is exactly the point. And these dimensions are designed specifically for that very reason, for us to identify the things we like and immediately take action, purposeful daily action, so we can find a purpose and, and work on that. 
Okay, so it starts with that, follow your heart. So the way it works is uh, I have broken down the exercise, these affirmations uh, in two sets. Each set represents the 10 dimensions, but there are different components of the 10 dimensions because it's, then again, the previous video was about duality and the nature of duality, duality principles. And we need duality is the fundamental, um, uh, say, component that allows us to map out our consciousness, our self-awareness, infinity itself, because we need to understand who we are. And in order for us to understand who we, who we are, we need to understand that we exist. And by having the polarity, by having the duality, then we can actually really have a pretty good idea of, of where we at when it comes to an identity or a true self. And then that would lead us towards our purpose. That would lead us towards our purpose, which is exactly uh, the reason why we're doing this in the first place. So if you allow me, just I just need to quickly do something on my phone. Hang on. Okay. Great. Okay. So great. So okay. So sorry about that. Okay, so 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 let 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 us let, let, let's, let's let's get started. Let, let's talk about it. Okay, let, let, let's talk about it because this is very important. This is a beautiful exercise, and I want to make sure that we 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 I explain myself properly. Okay, so so the first this the first state is uh, things I'm grateful for. Things I'm grateful for. Okay, and this, why gratitude? Because gratitude comes from the heart. And gratitude is this beautiful, mature idea of emotions that allows you to be grounded in reality. Because you're grateful for your life, you're grateful for the experiences, for the events, for all the memories and all the things that have shaped you into who you are throughout your 10 dimensions that form you as an individual. The part of who you are, your identity and true self, is at the heart of these ten dimensions. Okay, so you gotta. There's always something to be grateful about you, who you are in each of those dimensions, which is part of love, because in the end, it's about grateful gratitude and love and creation. And love comes from the heart, and we're a sentient species, so we need to love ourselves. We need to love ourselves. We need to love ourselves. We need to understand that this is the way we're a benevolent species. And it starts with the heart. And love is that. Love is healing, recovery, forgiving, acceptance, gratitude. All these beautiful things. And we do that by loving those memories, by loving those emotions. If they're negative or positive, it doesn't really matter. We need to love them. So I'm, gratitude is the positive side. As I said, duality has two sides, the polarity, negative and positive. I'm talking about the positive things. The positive things starts with the positive things, things that you're grateful for, things that you have done because it gives you that sense of pride because you already achieved it. You're grateful for that. And it's at each of your dimensions. Okay, so let's do that. It's beautiful because we're emotions and we need to follow our hearts and feel good about it. And what is the meaning of this? So this means that you write down the first thing that comes to mind for each dimension. In this case, things I'm grateful for. Okay, the first dimension is body. Because we're a body with a human body. And the body is things like your genes, your wellness, your well-being, your diet, uh, exercise, uh, anything that has to do with your body. Anything that has to do with your body. Anything. Anything that has to do with you, with your body. And what represents that component of you. Because we all have a body. We all look away. We, we, we all... We all we are a body. So it's important for you uh, to understand that it starts with a body, with a human body. Okay, that's the first dimension. So things that I'm grateful for. So let's start with the body, the first dimension. So you choose as an example something that you're grateful for. So you can, it can be something like uh, I'm grateful for uh, uh, having uh, a healthy body that allows me to exercise every day. Or uh, I'm grateful for uh, 
being able to uh to you know whatever it don't it has to be about you or i'm grateful for having uh um uh, you know two hands so i can create with my hands or i can draw the drawings that i draw at work or or I can play football on the weekends because I have two legs or anything that's related to your body. For example, in my case, um, uh, I chose something about some, it could be something make keep it, to myself out of, so it's more like generic. So uh, things I'm grateful for is like, I'm grateful for uh, being able to uh, eat uh, wonderful food every day, healthy food, or I'm grateful for uh, exercising every day or I'm health or I'm grateful for my health something like that something that is about the body you choose because the body you know is many dimensions in the previous video I explained each of the dimensions so you have to be something about you your body that you're grateful for okay something that you're grateful for is a personal thing that defines you so you can be positive about your body immediately about who you are that one of those dimensions immediately you see it's a positive message Self-reinforcing is an affirmation of who you are, something that you're grateful for, which is important because you are your thoughts. Okay, so the second dimension is family. We all have a family. Sometimes uh, uh, you might not know your family. Some people have, uh, sp you know, special uh, circumstances around that, that dimension. But still, we all come from a womb. There is always an origin when it comes to our family. So, so it's something about your family. For example, it could be something I'm grateful for having a beautiful wife or I'm grateful for having healthy kids. Uh, I'm grateful for my, my daughter to, to be so intelligent or I'm grateful for having my grandma living next door. That's an example. Something that you're grateful for about your family. Well, I'm grateful for the wisdom that my grandpa taught me. Anything. So it's something about family, something that you're grateful for. So so you you get the notion then the third dimension is origin origin is uh your heritage your legacy uh, your birthplace uh your mother tongue um uh, things like that your nationality if that's something that matters to you uh your roots your origin like things that are of that nature, culture, all these different things, uh, customs, traditions that are eth ethnic elements that represent a big way of who you are from both sides of the equation, your, your mom's side, your dad's side or anything, anything that you are in that way. So you can be something like I'm grateful for, um, for, uh, uh, the traditions uh, of my uh, hometown, uh, the customs that I learned in the city where I'm from, the food, the food where I'm from, I love the food where I'm from, I'm grateful for that, or I'm, I'm grateful for the traditions of this, uh, of the country where I'm from, or anything, anything, it's just, it's a choice, or I'm grateful for for the heritage or the inheritance that my family uh, left me, or like I'm grateful for for the legacy of my ancestors or my predecessors in the hometown, or like or whatever. So that's important. It's something that you're grateful for in that category. And then you move into the next dimension, which is context. Context is uh, it could be the past or it could be the present moment here and now. The house where you live, your neighborhood, the city where you live, or cities where you lived, or houses where you lived, or um, or neighborhoods where you lived, nature access that you have, your access to nature, your story around nature, your context, uh, environment, uh, the city, the country, your context, uh, the school. Uh, in origins could be the school that you went to as well, university and all that. So context is that is is the context, your context, your surroundings at this very moment and in the past as well. You can also use the past. So so it, it could be, uh, for example, could be, um, I'm grateful for uh, the beautiful house that I have. I own a beautiful house. That could be an example, something that you're grateful for. Or well, I'm grateful for living in a house that has water nearby so I can go to the beach and swim every day. That's an example, okay? 
So the fifth dimension is emotions, because remember we're sentient beings. It's a fundamental part of who we are, emotions and feelings. And this has to do with everything uh, around that. Emotional intelligence, um, empathy, uh, your mind state, uh, your ability to, uh, to, to empathize, to have sympathy, your ability to deal with your emotions, everything that has to do with you, or your, the health of your mind, all these, all these your, 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 your mind state, everything that's about your mind. Okay, so something that you're grateful for could be, I'm grateful for having the, uh, cope, the positive coping strategies to deal with uh, uncertainty at work every day. Or I'm, I'm grateful that I can, I, 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 I can, you know, engage in mindfulness and deal with stress every day at work. Something like that. Something like that. Or I'm grateful that I can, le I'm, I'm a pretty good listener and I feel empathy for my neighbors or my coworkers. So that, that's something like that. So do with emotions, it has to do with that side of thing, because this is important. Okay, we're emotional beings, we're sentient beings. Then the sixth dimension is knowledge. So then again, um, it will be things like uh, languages that you speak, uh, skills that you have, traits that you know, your expertise, degrees that you have, um, all these areas, general knowledge, competence in general, uh, tools, understanding, uh, knowledge, all these different things that you have in your, that are useful things, knowledge that you have uh, about things. So for example, uh, uh, your intelligence as well, your IQ, all these different things, your ability to, to think and engage your creativity, all these different things. So it could be an example, I'm grateful for uh, being an avid reader. And I'm grateful for having such a great memory that allows me, you know, to, to learn very quickly. I'm a quick learner. I'm grateful for being a quick learner. That's an example. Okay. So then the seventh uh, dimension is productivity. It's like your job, uh, your hobbies, vocations, um, professions, careers, anything that has to do with these. See, if, if, you're, if you're a professional, um, athlete say for example if you are i don't know a firefighter if if you are a musician if you myself a writer so anything that uh, that's something it doesn't really matter what it is and and you something that you're grateful for so say, i'm grateful for the job that i have for example oh I, I i'm grateful for um i'm grateful for uh for uh for being able to uh to, 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 to do what I love or so I say that you're a builder. I'm grateful for working for the company that I work for. I'm grateful for owning my own business. I'm working, building homes. It's an example. Everything that has to do with productivity in that regard, vocations, hobbies, or I'm grateful for uh, playing footy on the weekends with, with, uh, because it's great. It's one of my favorite hobbies. Or I'm, I'm grateful for running every morning or something like that. So it's productivity, all these different things. You can refer to the visual in about uh, the boundaries so you understand what I mean by that. And then the eighth dimension is money. Money is an important dimension and it has to do with like savings, investments, uh, the net worth, your assets, all, all that's financial. So it could be I'm grateful for... Uh, you know, being able to save 20% of my income every month, or I'm grateful for being able to invest 5% of my income of my paycheck every week, or I'm grateful for having a house and a batch or, a, you know, a holiday home, or I'm grateful for having a portfolio of investments, etc. and so on. I'm grateful for having savings. I'm grateful for, uh, you know, having a some money and being able to buy the things that I like. This is an example. So something that you're grateful for. This money is important. Okay, so we all need it. So then uh, the, name, the ninth dimension is uh, society. We're all part of society. We're all humans. So it would be something like, um, you know, groups that you belong to, social circles, colleagues, uh, acquaintances, uh, clubs, 
tribes, uh, memberships, all these different things, uh, colleagues, your neighbors, anything, anyone in society that you're part of, any groups, any any teams, any 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 anything that has to do with society, communities, all these. That's that dimension. So it could be something like I'm grateful for uh, having my for my best friend, or I'm grateful for uh, being part of my uh, football club, or I'm grateful for um, belonging to uh, this uh, network uh, at work that allows me to uh, learn and, and tap into a lot of. Uh, resources that I wouldn't otherwise have access to, example. Then the 10th dimension is wisdom. These are values, these are principles, beliefs, these are uh, ethics and morals that essentially make you, they, they make you up, they, they make up who you are. This is essentially your, your, the fabric of your, of like, you know, your moral compass as is known for like the, the, the you know the, your convictions about life and all these different things, whatever they are, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that is real, and all humans have these, and all of us. And this exercise is about choosing one thing that that I'm grateful for. So you could be I'm grateful for uh, for my uh, beliefs in myself. I'm I'm grateful for my work ethic. I'm grateful for uh, for my um, I don't know my moral code when it comes to uh, doing social work. Could be anything, a anything, anything really. That's that. That's wisdom. Is this idea, this notion, your deepest convictions, your deepest belief? It could be anything. You choose what it is. And remember, when it comes to these things, because this is the things that you're grateful for, this is the duality, the positive side of it. Uh, you write it down, the first thing that comes to your mind for each dimension. The first thing that comes to your mind, follow your heart, follow your heart. The first thing that comes to your mind, say, buddy, first hits you, you write that one down. And then start there. Then in the future, you you know, you can change them. You make changes and updates whenever needed. But you start with the first thing that comes to you, because it's your heart, it's a sign, it's a signal. You see your inner voice right away. Remember, you're trying to identify your true self. You're trying to identify your purpose. So you start with these things that you're grateful for. And then you start there. So that's your first set of affirmations. So you stay in affirmations for things that you're grateful for. And then you move into the next section, which is dualities, kind of like the negative things or like the, you know, the things that you need to work on. So I'm calling things I'm working on. Okay, so then again, one for each dimension. So then again, for your body, you will be something like, okay, I need to eat healthier or I need to sleep more. Example. For family will be, I need to uh, uh, listen to my son more. I need to uh, call my mom more often. An example. Uh, origin could be, I need to learn more about uh, my heritage or my bloodline or my ancestry or I need to uh, learn more about my traditions or I need to I'm, I'm forgetting my mother tongue I need to practice my mother tongue or I need to learn more about my history the, or the history of my country or I need to learn more about anything so you choose then the context will be oh I need to paint the house I need to work on or I need to buy a house or I need to uh, I'm working on uh, I need to do the garden or I, I need to be friendlier with my neighbors, or I need to engage more with a community out there in the neighborhood, or something like that. It's something that is something that you know that you need to work on, and it's always follow your heart. It's the first thing that comes to your mind normally, the one that matters the most for that dimension. Because remember, you got 10 dimensions, so it will be 10 things. So there will be 10 things that would come to mind. So the first one that comes to mind, that's the one you write down as your affirmation, things I need to work on. Okay, so emotions is like, okay, I need to uh, breathe more often so I don't get as frustrated with my neighbor or um, or I need to uh, uh, I need to be more tolerant uh, with my brother for example it's an example so it could be anything or any, oh, I need to listen to my uh, manager more at work something like that something like that okay so emotions, something that has to do with emotions, with empathy, with sympathy, with emotional quotient, with 
uh, all everything that has to do your well-being in that regard your your mindset your mindfulness everything the health of your mind all these different things okay so then the sixth dimension is knowledge so knowledge is you know uh, i need to for example you say i need to learn um a third language or i need to learn a new language or i need to learn uh how to uh fix my car i need to learn about i need to improve my my mathematics or i need to learn how to draw or i need to anything or i need to learn something or it's something that you need to work on that you know the first thing that comes to mind about knowledge then traits or skills or anything for work or something or for your personal life or anything then you just do that and then that's it that's a sign you see that's a, that's a signal you're following your heart the first thing that you write down is guiding you to things that you can work on purposeful daily action purpose itself tasks activities jobs all these things are related to your purpose to you who you are the things that you do they're all connected and then productivity will be uh i need to go to uni and get a university degree or I need to um, get a new job, or I need to get promoted, or I need to uh, become more productive at work, or I need to start my own business, or I need to work on my, uh, I am writing a book, example. All these things, did you see? Big, big productivity. This is a big purpose right there that you can immediately identify because your mind is gonna tell you right away. Okay, then money, the eighth dimension. Uh, I need to save more money. I need to save 10% of my weekly income uh, to buy a house. It's an example. Okay, the ninth dimension could be I need to be more social. I need to join more clubs. I, I, I need to uh, go to the local uh, bowling club more often. Uh, I need to call my best friend from childhood. I need to meet with, my, with the community more often on the weekends. I need to go to the play group more often with my kids. An example. Uh, uh, the tenth dimension is wisdom. So wisdom will be something like um, uh, I, I need to uh, be part of uh, my local uh, community board and help out around there because you know it's good if I if I if I go to the community hall. More often, I will be able to help out my neighbors, and I believe in helping the community. It's part of my core beliefs and my values. So I need to do something of that, or, or I need to believe in myself more often, or something like that. I need to work on my self-belief, or I need to love myself more, or something like that. Something that is about you, your beliefs, your values, your principles, your ethics, your morals. Something that makes up that wisdom of each of us, eh? each individual has that. So you, you choose something and the first thing that comes to mind is normally the best thing. So remember, you write down the first thing that comes to mind for each dimension and you got two sets, it's 20 in total, 20 affirmations, 10 for each dimension. And you got two sets, things I'm grateful for, things I'm working on. You see, you read those, it would take you maybe half an hour to do the exercise, maybe an hour, depending. But once you do it, then it would be there and you can read it every day and it would take one or two minutes to read it. And it will remind you and then you have all these emotions, which is the next level because you read, you read them daily. Eh? It's part of, it's the first exercise. So it's getting into the mindset of purposeful daily action that you know, you know that you have to take action every day, take action every day, you take action every day. So then again, um, and you read them daily. You can read them as many times as you like, but as long as you read them at least once, whenever you have the time and the energy, do that because it helps you, it helps your mind, it helps your true self, it helps your identity, it helps follow your heart, it will help you. And it, and if you see that, oh, I don't really think this is the right thing, then you can make changes and update, update, and updates whenever needed. And then you just make, keep them relevant, keep them up, keep, keep them up to date. Because remember, the whole, you're trying to find yourself, you're trying to find your identity, your purpose. True self-affirmations, feeling good about yourself, things that you've done already, and then things you need to work on, which is purpose and all these different things. Okay, so that's that. But then you have to integrate this with the 11 boundaries because for each of those dimensions, for and things I'm grateful for and things I'm working on, you, you get your boundaries. Remember, it starts with self-love. That's why gratitude is such an important thing because it's self-love and self-love leads to self-discovery and self-discovery leads to self-awareness. Self-awareness leads to self-control. Self-control leads to self-esteem. Self-esteem leads to self-image. 
Self-determination leads to self-realization. Self-realization leads to self-actualization. Self-actualization leads to self-sovereignty. And then self-sovereignty leads to self-transcendence. So I'm going to give you an example or two for what I mean by this. So say, for example, things I'm grateful for, say, uh, my knowledge, say my knowledge, uh, that, that, I, I, uh, I'm a quick learner. I'm grateful for being a quick learner. And then you see right immediately gratitude is self-love. You love yourself. You're accepting that you're a quick learner. So it's a positive notion. You're a good learner. It's self-love. And what's learning? Well, learning is your choice. You learn about what you want to do because you follow your heart, the things you like. And that leads to what? Self-discovery. Because you tend to read things that you want to learn about, things you like. So it's self-discovery. You're learning about yourself. I like this. I like learning about this. I like learning. You see, self-discovery. You start to understand yourself all because of self-love, because of gratitude. And then that leads to what? Self-awareness. Because the more you learn, the more you figure out about yourself. Oh, I don't like reading about these things. I write about these things. And when you put those things into, into practice, the things that you're learning, then that's self-awareness. You're learning about yourself. You become more aware. I don't really like these type of books. I like these type of books. I, I don't like learning about this. I really like learning about this. And then you keep on learning and learning and learning. And then that's an endless cycle. It's infinite. And then it leads to what? Self-image. Because you start to form a self-image. In the case of knowledge, because it's about learning, then you start to say, hey, you know, I'm a very good learner, actually. I'm a fast learner. I'm a very intelligent person. I like this about myself. And then you see you're forming a self-image that comes from, well, from, from sorry, I meant from self-awareness, you move into uh, self-control. So you start to choose what you read and what you don't read and when you read and all these different things. Say, for example, so that's one example, one they mentioned, things I'm working on. And then that leads to self-esteem because the moment you start to control yourself, then you start to see, you see what? Um, I'm reading a lot about, say, personal growth. So you see, you start to, to say, you know, I actually love myself and, and I really like this and I'm controlling myself and I'm reading things that are actually productive and helping me to be better. So you see, your self-esteem starts to develop. And then that leads to self-image. I'm a good learner. I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm smart. And then that leads to what? Self-determination. You know what? I'm smart. I can do things. I'm going to put into practice all the things that I've learned, all the readings, which is what I did with my book. And I'm putting it into motion. That's self-determination, purposeful daily action, free will, immediately there. And then that leads to what? Self-realization is the capability that oh, I'm taking action. I'm reading my affirmations. I'm, ta I'm writing down my affirmations. I'm reading them and writing them every day. I'm putting my purpose into motion. I'm doing these things, you see? I'm realizing who I am and my purpose and I love myself. It's great. And then that leads to what? Self-actualization, meaning that you start doing it and then you actually... I, you, I painted a house. I bought the house. I'm eating healthier. It's been five years since I stopped eating processed foods. It's, five, it's been one year since I bought my second home. You see? It's self-actualization. And then that leads to what? Self-sovereignty. You know I'm financially free. Or I'm extremely intelligent. I have my own business and I teach people and stuff. Or educate people or whatever. And then that leads to what? Self-transcendence. You go be, be beyond you. You know, my knowledge allowed me to understand it's not only about me. It's not only about loving myself. It's loving my creations and helping others and being part of the community and these, all these different things and helping society. You see, and you apply all these boundaries to each of the dimensions, things I'm working, uh, working on and things I'm grateful for. And immediately you start to see the changes in your life and you identify your true self, you identify your identity, and then you start to see paths for purpose. So you choose activities, so you take purposeful daily action. Humanity, I love you all with all my heart, with all my might. You see, I'm trying to keep them within 40 minutes. So this is the exercise. You can review it. You can check it out. Exercise one, true self-affirmations, unifying the 10 dimensions and 11 boundaries. Follow your heart. Write down the first thing that comes to your mind for each dimension. Read them daily. Make changes and updates whenever needed. Remember who we are. We like spherical beings. This is who we are. We are a benevolent species, we are a love-based species, we are a heart-based species. This is exactly who we are. We're the human race, we're the citizens of the Republic of Planet Earth, we're the leaders of the Republic of Planet Earth, we're the defenders of the Republic of Planet Earth, we're the citizens of the Republic of Planet Earth. We live to love and we love to live. We're here. The purpose of life is a life of purpose, purpose for life, meaningful life, fulfilling life, happy life. We're here for that. The pulse of life, the pulse of creation. Who we are, we infinite love, infinite energy, infinite creation. I love you all with all my heart, with all my might. There will be more exercises coming through. Love you all with all my heart, with all my might.